I am unashamed. What about you? So welcome to Unashamed, uh, the podcast that could, the little engine that, that keeps uh, churning out uh, the Word of God, and we're so excited to have you guys be a part of that. Uh, Jace, a few podcasts ago last week, you were telling about being in Colorado, and you were talking about how some of your jokes didn't quite land um, with folks. I don't for whatever that, reason there that's was a, a, that's an understatement. A little bit of a disconnect. So, so I guess our some of our crew, Maddie led crew, I guess, got you something um, to symbolize when you have problems in front of audiences. So, you for want those to share who, who are listening, I have a gold. What kind of shape is this? Kind of a hexagon. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, eight. Eight. So an octagon. I have an octagon with a black button on it. And I think it was given, because there's a lot of time in this podcast that we need need something. Yeah. We need a sound effect. Because Cy, on the the duck call room, he's surrounded by noisemakers. You know, like he has bells and a, he loves bells. Yeah, He's obsessed with bells. He rings the bell. He rings the bell. But he is a human noisemaker. Yeah, Just, I mean, he cannot sit still. He pops. He hits stuff. He's thumping. He's jumping. And he wears a watch. He still wears a watch. Which I, why? <laughs> <laughs> what what could Sai possibly have Look, to keep time with? I've I've already told you all my stance about. Older people driving, I think it would help the economy if once you got to about 65, you had to have a chauffeur. (laughs) Because most of the times when you're on the road, it's either somebody on their cell phone that's causing all the problems, or it's someone that's a more mature human being who's holding it up. And I'm not going to mention any names, but when you get on interstate, the left lane... Is for passing only. That's what this is what the signs say. But when you get there, and you say, "Well, I'm going the speed limit," you know, seventy, and there are forty-seven cars behind you <laughs> or past you on the right, and you say, "Nope, <laughs> I'm going the speed limit." It it causes a dangerous situation. So, thank you, Jace. It had to be said. I'm so yeah. So, so I shouldn't be wearing a watch. It's the same thing applies. You reach a certain age where you don't need to know what time it is. I'm that, there. Yeah, you're there. That's just a <laughs> reminder that it's irrelevant, right, Dad? I mean, what? I have no idea of time, the passage of time. Mm-hmm. I'm just sitting here. I mean, they say that about football <laughs> and the NFL, and nobody, nobody, they're not offended, you know, because they say NFL means not for long, because the average time that you're there is not long. Not long. <laughs> Same thing applies to once you reach maturity. So anyway, I have in my hand, uh, in the spirit of Uncle Si, we have a noisemaker. And I think this is the most needed sound effect on the show. Because there's some things that are said that only this sound applies. (laughs) That's crickets. (laughs) So when I was in Colorado and I told joke after joke for five minutes, proving jokes, because you got to remember when you speak a lot, if you come up with an idea of something that's funny, that has a spiritual principle. Right. You know, and I'll pick the Forever 21. Here's here's a store that said, look, we want to get people to believe that if you buy these clothes, you can be 21 forever. <laughs> That's right. Now, where did they get that idea? Where's the only place on earth that you could possibly be forever 21? Does anybody know? The Where's Bible. the only place on earth that you possibly, this is a riddle. There's the only place on earth that you could possibly be 21 forever. Well, I would say heaven, but I didn't, I mean, that may be too broad. Well, what was Jesus' f- first message when he began his ministry? What is the first thing he started talking about when he began his ministry? He said, the kingdom is near. It's near. 
It's coming. Where's it coming? It's coming to Earth. He's he's bringing it. He's bringing it. It's there. So if you're a member it's, it's of there. the kingdom of heaven on Earth, you're within a group of, of however you want to call that. It's more of an organism, a movement. Mm-hmm. Spirit filled people. The spirit was poured out in Acts chapter two. People, human beings, could then receive the Holy Spirit of God. Now, that doesn't mean they have then been changed to forever 21, but if you have the Spirit of God, Romans 8, 11, the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, if it's living in you, it will bring life. Fortunately, there. Uh-oh. Here's a I was interrupting my... my no. Uh, no, I, I know. I'm, he's just I'm adding fuel. You. Add it fuel. Is, uh, <laughs> the entire law is summed up in a single command. Love your neighbor as yourself. Yeah. If you keep on biting and devouring each other, and just think about how human beings participate in that, biting and devouring each other, yeah. watch out, or you will be destroyed by each other. So I say, you say, how do you worm your way out of all this? Live by the Spirit. You say, live by the Spirit. What could it mean? And you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. If you live by the Spirit, you won't gratify the sinful part. That's always after. For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the Spirit. And the Spirit, what is contrary to the sinful nature. They're in conflict with each other. But you're carrying both of them. Everybody is. But you say... There's a battle, Romans 7. It's a battle. You say, but with the Spirit... On my side, I've got the upper hand here. That's correct. They're in conflict with each other with uh, so that you do not do what you want. You say, you know, how am I going to keep from doing all this stuff? But if you are led by the Spirit, you're not even under law. It does not apply. You're led by the Spirit. The acts of the sinful nature are obvious. You say, well, what do you don't want to do? Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, factions, envy, drunkenness, or I warn you, as I did before, those who live like this, no matter who you're claiming or what it is, will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, Patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Boy, what qualities. It can be done. Yeah. All, pe- all men and women, you can make the switch over, and the way you behave becomes a major part of your life because you know you're in this thing forever. You've been promised. Well, forever. You said forever. it. There's a way to be forever. So the fuel's there for us. But what I'm saying is there is a way. So to back up and reset, the how if you put on clothes from this store, because my joke is I said, have you ever been to the store Forever 21? And a few people nodded their head. Of course, it was I was in Colorado and it was all men. Most men are not doing the shopping. Forever 21 as I'll be like I'm 21 forever. That's the name of the store is Forever 21. So then I said, Which once you took the spiritual part out of that, I would never want to be forever 21 without the kingdom of God because I was an oh. idiot at 21. And exactly. That's some of your dumbest maneuvers. Well, I don't want to be forever so 21 joke, by a worldly so 21 is the prime in the <laughs> middle <laughs> of the joke is, idiocy. I said, I said, have you been to that store forever 21? Yeah. It went bankrupt. <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny. Nobody joke. It's I mean, funny. nobody laughed. So what did you get? Listen. So then I had crickets. I made the point. Jesus lived on this earth for 33 years. He died. And then all of a sudden, after his death, three days later, he now reappears. And the disciples were looking at him. And there's a story in John 21 where he says, hey, throw your, throw your nets over here. And they knew it was the Lord. I don't they think, caught the fish, right? To add some flavor to your thinking, what's pretty amazing, 
is that you, if you had to pick a date whereby you had the most trouble, and you, you can I find myself, after baptizing thousands, I've looked at them and I've guessed at their age. Their age is about 28 to 33. Yeah. That's when Jesus said, I'm done here at 33. Well, by the time a human being reaches the age of 33, it's settled in his mind to a great extent who Most, he's going maybe, to follow, yeah. God or the Satan. It's so, a valid, it's a valid it's point. point. So my point, is, thought. My point thought. is the only way to forever be 21, if it's a possibility, you would have to figure out who this Jesus is because he came back from the dead. Now, I don't know how old he was. That's what I failed to quotations. do at 33. I don't know how old he was when he gathered with his disciples post his death and they had some fish and he wasn't eating that fish to sustain his life. You know, if you don't eat, you will die unless you just came back from the dead. So I would assume that he's eating fish just because he wants to, <laughs> not because he has to. He didn't have to eat it based on its vitamin value. No. So the point was that I thought would be funny. It wasn't. Crickets. However, when you think about it, it is true. Yep. The only way you're forever going to be 21 on the earth as a possibility is to be a member of the greatest thing on earth, which would be the kingdom of God, which well is said. which are people who have the Holy Spirit, who have not been resurrected yet. It hasn't, it hasn't taken its final form in eternity. And I don't think you would be an age, let's say, 21. But the only way that would be possible is the resurrection of Jesus. It's not in a store, and, and it proved out when it went bankrupt. How does a, how does a forever 21, how does that become bankrupt? <laughs> so it makes me think of Galatians three twenty six and 27. We talked about this last podcast when we talked about the movie, or I guess a few podcasts yeah, yeah, ago when we were talking about the movie. For all of you're all sons through faith in Christ Jesus. For all of you who have been baptized into Christ, have put on Christ. Or you can think, you know, Galatians two twenty. I've been crucified with Christ. I no longer live. He lives in me. So, same Spirit. Romans eight eleven. Same resurrection. There's your possibility. That that was the point. But now I have something because all of us say things that we may not understand and so we have a cricket button i think it'll be good like if zach drops a big word on us like exactly and we don't know what it is that's where the original idea came from right because zach he in his spare time he evidently studies the dictionary <laughs> and he's proud and look i mean hey he he knows more words than i know but so Zach, this is the new cricket machine for both jokes that don't land and or large vocabulary words. Before you respond, let's take a break. So you don't think about it, Jace, but um, you know, a lot of air travel here lately. One of the things you appreciate when you're having to sit for a long period of time is what kind of underwear that you're wearing. That can make a big difference. Um, it does to me on an airplane or anywhere else in a duck blind. One of uh, the, my favorite things about Tommy John uh, is that they don't ride and they don't move around on you, which is really good. We've been talking about Tommy John underwear since really the podcast began. I've been wearing them since before they became a sponsor. Uh, they they're breathable, they're lightweight, they're moisture wicking fabric with four times the stretch of all competing brands, so they're comfortable. Uh, they've sold over twenty million pairs. They've got thousands of five star reviews. And so we love these guys. They said they don't have customers, they have fanatics. They also have the best pair you'll ever wear guarantee, which means there's no downside. Uh, if you get them, you don't like them, you can get your money back, but you're going to love them. Um, so check these guys out. 20% off your first order right now at tommyjohn.com slash Phil. That's 20% off at tommyjohn.com slash Phil. See their site for details. First of all, can you hear me? Yeah. 
Loud and clear. We hear Happy. you, and the whole world hears you. Is that <laughs> yeah, I, I stepped out because I had an emergency at the house. There was a woman screaming at the top of her lungs. I thought something was bad going on. I go outside. I hear her screaming. I can't identify where she's coming from. I call the cops. The cops show up. This all happened while you guys when I left when I left the last conversation. Yeah, this real time. And then I look, and then Jill, her uh, her car door's open, and she's nowhere to be found. So I'm start, I started freaking out. So, make a long story short, I, I pulled out my pistol. I, I, I'm I'm roaming the the neighborhood around the houses, and I'm trying to track. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm like sweating. I'm like, what? And the, I thought maybe it was her. And the cops show up, and I'm like, I'm like, I'm tracking her phone. Says she's at this address, and they're like, well, that's like two miles down the road. I was like, that's the tennis court. I'm like, okay. So I go inside. I said, where's mom? So she's going to play tennis with uh, my sister. So I, it was all for nothing. I don't know what the <laughs> what the scream was, but I left, and you guys were talking about the crickets at the at the. The deal, I come back, and now y'all are still talking about the, the crickets in Colorado. Well, after hearing that story, yeah, Zach, after, yeah, listen. I have one thing to say. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> so y'all going to add a button? Is that what the conversation I missed it was? A, it was a I gift. It was a gift it. from the crew to Jay's because uh, last week he was talking about having some jokes that didn't land in Colorado. So they yeah. got they brought him today a cricket machine, and uh, but I, I immediately knew that we could expand that beyond jokes and just stories like you just told that went nowhere. Yeah, that, and, don't hit, that just don't hit home. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like I thought my wife was That's in fair. trouble and she was playing tennis. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah. or it could have been, as my wife said, she said, "Babe, maybe you need to entertain the thought that." You're just not funny. <laughs> I said, thank you, babe. I love you so much. <laughs> hey, pipe down up behind the walls. Over yeah, yeah. Man, I was laughing not, at that one. Now, see, you don't want to be laughing at that, but I'm I'm so glad I have this now. So I just feel. Yeah, like so this. so Zach, J Jace, Jason Silas is now like uh, Silas Merritt, who has sound things on the duck car room now jace has a new toy so make sure the woman that knows everything and i can't catch her name but someone gave me a clock <laughs> and this woman would tell me keep time for me and everything this this Al man Alexa. gave me but it was all There's a lie a it was a lie <laughs> there was the woman, a woman who knows everything and she'd tell me what time and she said does, oh, does you're talking apply. about uh, <laughs> does not apply. You're talking about uh, what's her name? Here. What's the Alexa? Alexa. Alexa. I asked her a question. She couldn't answer. I said, "I'm out of here." <laughs> Bill, there's another point to what I'm saying. Here's the world saying, "We have you have your God. We have an omniscient, computerized, <laughs> yep, computerized, generated, all knowing <laughs> being." So you asked her if she hunted ducks, and what did she tell you? Yeah, I asked her if what I've got. She said, you know, does not apply. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She said, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. How do you not know? That's what Dad said. Hunt, How do you not know? You either hunt or you don't. You either know or you don't. So Alexa was. And then he said, Dad says that she asked. Of course, Dad doesn't hear so well. But he says that she asked him, where was Cy? Si? And then he immediately got paranoid because he said, how does she even know I have a brother named Cy? Si? And then he checked her conversion and determined she might be an atheist. So, so we'll see how it plays. We we now uh, we needed this. I think it's going to make a better podcast well, moving forward. Leave it to the crew to upgrade our facilities. With it now, it takes a village. It takes a village. You know? Do you know how that sound actually? I, I learned this from being a preacher from preacher jokes. Someone told me that because at, at our church building. In the when we have a really really hot summer here, a lot of times the crickets will come inside our building and get in our baptistry actually to escape the heat. And we've had to we've had to wash them out of the way, and we dad. Yeah, I've seen know. it. And so uh, the sound that that uh, machine makes, Jace, it's the two uh, I guess upper 
um, what would you call those um, legs of a cricket rubbing together. So when you hear that noise, that's their two upper, their forward legs rubbing together. So that's the cricket noise. Just so you know, that's a random fact. But so you got that. Great. <laughs> so I know what the draw is to the podcast, and it is the Word of God. And we're fixing to get into my favorite chapter in the entire Bible. Yep. I mean, just think about that. Yeah, mine too. Is it really? Yeah, absolutely. I've told this story so many times. In fact, I was going to bring a book today, and I couldn't find it this morning. There's a book that Kyle Eidelman wrote. He's the the lead pastor at Southeast Christian, Louisville, Kentucky. Uh, Fantastic read. And it's about the prodigal son and about this story. And so I, I will try to have it on the next podcast. But it, uh, this story is so impactful. And it just, you know, we're going to be setting it up a little bit because there's a lot going on here. It just to sitting around this table, that's Zach and I both were sort of like the youngest brother in the story because we were what I would call Zach short term prodigals. Uh, mm-hmm. In other words, it, it didn't last long, but it was a few years. Uh, away from God and away from our family. Dad, you were more a long-term prodigal because for you it was about 10 years of this lifestyle that's mentioned. Jace, you were not, but you have said before that you relate some in the story from your past into the older brother in the story, which in my opinion is really who this parable was aimed at. All three parables because there's three different Which is the hardest nut to crack, Yeah, by the way. Exactly. Which... If you do things God's way, you will have less baggage when it comes to morality. I mean, obviously, you don't want to go out there. There's never anywhere in the Bible that promotes the more sin you do. Yeah, the better off you'll be. Yeah. And, and yeah. By, by contrast, a lot of people who, you know, I go and I speak at Celebrate Recovery a lot, which is probably... I know it was weird for people at first because they're like, well, why would you come here? Because you don't know. You hadn't had the same struggle. The typical argument against that is, well, you don't know what I've been through. And so, which is basically a disarming mechanism not to listen to anything from the word of God. Right. I mean, that's just the truth. Because the point is, if that were the case, Jesus would be the worst teacher of all time. That's he would exactly be disqualified. Right. If you had to, if you had to have experienced a sinful life, Jesus would be the worst teacher ever. That's and right. instead, he's the best teacher ever. So what don't fall so. for that pitiful argument. Yep. It's harder when you do have the older brother tendencies, because I've said before, I believe the worst sin is to come out from under is pride. It is because you think you're better than everybody or you think you can earn your your way to God's favor and you can be lost and you don't know it. And so I think before we begin this, because this goes down a lot of roads, there's a lot of things here that we're going to discuss, but I think you got to keep in mind the the main reason that these three stories came out was because of the predicament that Jesus was in, and the Pharisees looked and made this accusation in verse 2. The Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Because verse 1 says, the tax collectors and sinners were all gathered around to hear Jesus. And so here are the Pharisees. And the teachers of the law, they're, they're muttering. What, Mutter. what, what a word. Mutter. Muttering. In fact, I, I, I have that Greek word somewhere. Um, Why is he with them? The Greek word for this muttered or grumbled, some will say, is ganguzo. That's, that's the Greek word, which is, think about that word, ganguzo, ganguzo, ganguzo. It, it, when people, the word itself is kind of has that sound, and it reminded me of, Dad, the story you told when you went to New Zealand and you spoke, and they were kind of giving you the old House of Commons, ganguzo, ganguzo. Oh, yeah. It, it was like, we, we don't agree with what you're doing. I said, why are they doing that? And, and the guy that brought me to there said, they don't like what they're hearing. <laughs> 
That's right. <laughs> when I preach the gospel. In the public setting. What was unique about it, to my face inside the building. Yeah. They were, what's the word? Ganguzo. 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 So that went down, and I said, they're all against me. However, they got a hold of how to get me on the computer. They said, sorry about that. I had to do it because of the people that I was with. They they would have Peer ostracized pressure. me forever Peer pressure. if I had said, the man is preaching the truth. Or an amen. Or an amen. Yeah. He said, and, and there was about 10 or 15 of them that actually got in touch with me saying, we're sorry that yeah. we murmured. We, we believe you what you say. Yeah, I thought, but I thought, they couldn't announce it because of their fear right. of being downloaded or you know, yeah. run out Off of somewhere. Yeah. So uh, I thought about that many times. Let's take another break. So I'm assuming with the Unashamed podcast, we've probably got a lot of gun owners out there, Jace, that listen to us. Is that probably a safe assumption? Second Amendment. It's yep. there for a reason. It's there for a reason. We are lawful uh, in our owning of weapons, but it is constitutional. Uh, one of the things we know as responsible gun owners, especially hunters, if you don't have a clean weapon, uh, then you're not going to have an efficient weapon or a safe weapon. That's very important. And sometimes things will happen in a duck blind or someplace out in the field, uh, and you'll get mud or different things down in your barrel. So uh, our friends at Barrel Buddy uh, have come up with a polymer system to be able to clean your barrels, make sure you get everything out of there. Uh, I've had trouble with that in the past when I was a youngster uh, of not having a clean barrel. And it makes a mess, and it is dangerous. So these guys are great, uh, great Christian company, uh, brothers in Christ. We love that about them. Uh, these polymers are white, you see, the ones I'm holding in my hand there, for every gauge of shotgun, uh, every rifle, every pistol, uh, so you can clean anything that you have. It's white, so you can tell the residue that comes out of it. You know you've gotten it out of there uh, and left it nice and clean. So check these guys out. Hunting season is upon us. BarrelBuddy.com is where you go. B-A-R-R-E-L Buddy.com. Check them out. Because you've told that story before, Dad, and, and I thought about this setting. And, Jace, I, I've always thought this was sort of the concluding point of everything we've been talking about in 13, 14, because remember all the settings we've been talking about in the last two chapters have been in a meal setting. Um, you know, and there's typically he's used that um, illustration when he's been talking about this. And so this, again they put into that context because they say it just says they were gathered around it, but they say he even eats with them. Like, and again, we talked about why Pharisees would have dinners. It was to advance their political careers. Yeah. It, this pride you're talking about was so prevalent, right? And there's Luke 14 that we went over through, let's see, where was it? 15 through 24, which I've never heard a sermon about that. Right. But, it's basically just the invite, you know, it's like, we're going to have a great, great banquet, go invite people and all alike, verse 18, they began to make excuses. Now you just think what God is inviting us to. That's why I started off talking about, he's in, inviting us to be a part of the greatest kingdom that has ever been and that will ever be. It's a forever eternal but there, kingdom. But there is in verse 25, the cost of being a disciple. Exactly. It's, it's, Which is it's, why people. Your, your, your name no. is on the, line, on the line, like in New Zealand. Yeah. Well, in America, it's just as bad. Right. They murmur against you. Well, you're right, Phil. The reason people did not want to accept the invitation is because of verses like 14. 33. In the same way, any of you who does not give up everything. He has there you are. might be my disciple. Well, that's a deal breaker to my there, there, cricket. There is a cost. <laughs> so then, Jesus. but that's then right. what did he say? He said, "Well, okay, all these people have excuses. I just bought some oxen. I just uh, what were the other excuses? I mean, they were they were absurd excuses. I just bought a field and I want to go look at it. Yeah, what kind of excuse is that? <laughs> this is." <laughs> You know, and I actually used this illustration after my Forever 21 joke didn't go, it was a dud. 
But I said, if someone knocked on the door, your door, and said, congratulations, you've won. I said, what would you say? It was crickets at first, but then I started getting a few answers. And someone said, the first answer, I'm in Colorado, and I'd made fun of them because they didn't duck hunt. So I think this was their natural response. The first answer I got, now just think about this. I, I give a parable. Someone knocks on your door and says, congratulations, you've won. You could say anything in your imagination. You know what my, the first answer I got in Colorado was? A gift certificate to there was a sporting to a sporting goods store there that I'd never heard of, and I was like, "That's it." <laughs> <laughs> so I said, "Think bigger," <laughs> and so somebody said, "A new car, a new car." I needed this button. I <laughs> knew. I said, you know, how about a million dollars, you know? And then the, somebody said, yeah, a million dollars. I was like, no, <laughs> how about a hundred million? I mean, I gave you the freedom to say anything in your imagination. It is not hard to imagine a gift certificate to a sporting goods store. <laughs> but really, I said, I'm glad you were honest. Yeah. That's the first thing that popped into your head. And here's Jesus offering you way better gifts. I mean, just let's start going through them. You know, forgiveness, cleanse conscience, yep. eternal relationships. So, but so he's coming up with this in this this banquet setting, and these people are like, it's the same answers. Oh, I would like to follow you to heaven and be a part of the greatest kingdom, but I just bought a field. I need to go look at it. I just got some oxen. I want to go. I want to go try. Then another said, uh, I just got married. I can't come. Well, how about bring her? <laughs> bring her to the greatest feast ever. And so then Jesus said, go out. I mean, I want my house full. So go out and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and lame. So you get to the next chapter, and here he is eating with tax collectors in that word, center. Jace, the welcomes, it says he welcomes in the NIV. Some of them say receives these sinners. The word komai means to welcome favorably, to look forward to, and to wait for is what that word means. So in other words, this is a depth of how he feels about them. It, it's a love. He, he's receiving and loves these people just like he was receiving them in the kingdom banquet. And I think the big question when you think about the opening for this is, one— why did Jesus feel so comfortable around people who were outcast in their culture and society? One, why? And then why did the other people not want to accept him or be around him? I mean, that, the why of this is a big question when you think about it. Why, why would Jesus be comfortable in this setting, and why are they so uncomfortable? Not only would they not even be around these people, they're uncomfortable that he wants to be around these people. I mean, the why of this is a really big question. When you think about it and you bring it forward into the modern day, why would you not be comfortable around people who are not like you, who don't know Jesus, who don't act the right way? And you say, well, you're uncomfortable because you, know, you don't approve of their behavior. I mean, true, but the only way their behavior would change was if somehow I was able to have some sort of impact on them. I, I mean, mean, it's I a mean, big question. If you think about what the common thread of these three stories he's fixing to tell in response to this accusation. Because these are, these are responses in three different ways to this man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So if you think about it, if Jesus is the Son of God, which we all believe he is beyond a shadow of a doubt, and that he is God, and you'll see a picture in these three stories of really how the triune God works together because he almost redefines God in a way as a father figure. And, and you know, Jesus, I think in every reference, but maybe one where he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He refers to God as a father. And then you have him himself being accused of fraternizing with the less desirable desirable people, which is that God became flesh and he came 
to serve and give his ransom, give himself as a ransom for many. I mean, that that's why he came. He, he is God's love incarnate in yeah. a human form. And then you say, well, where's the Holy Spirit? Well, in all these three stories, what, what I find fascinating is you find the similarity of something is lost. It's a, it depicts that's why he's eating, because you have a lost sheep, you have a lost coin, and you have a lost son. So when you think about that in the response he gave, it starts making sense. He's eating with them because they're lost. These human beings are lost. If you were the son of God, you came to find them. That's what you're doing. But there's also another common theme, joy. And you say, well, what is the fruit of the Spirit? Love, joy, peace. So you you actually kind of see that as the backdrop, which I think is exciting. No, that's good. Let's take another break. So uh, some breaking news. Uh, Jay's dad and I have just signed up for the Association of Mature American Citizens. Do you know that, Jay? Does that mean we're old? means we're old. Oh, there you go. <laughs> and uh, this group, we love what we love about this group uh, is they're sort of the uh, antithesis of AARP uh, because AARP is still back in Obamacare, gun control, transgender. Uh, they claim to be bipartisan, but the truth is 95% of their donations went to Democrats last year, so they're not. Uh, but there is a conservative alternative, and it's AMAC uh, that we're all now members of. Uh, they champion right to free speech, religious liberty, Second Amendment. They're the leading conservative advocacy and benefits organization. They defend parent rights and protect children. Uh, they're also fighting to restore America's election integrity as well. So AMAC is pushing back against all these efforts, to whether it's defunding the police, weaken the borders, or corrupting our youth. They have over 2 million members nationwide. They're pro-faith, they're pro-family, and they're pro-freedom. But they can't do it alone. Joining gives you special access to special low rates on cell phones, um, cell phone plans, health, wellness products, travel, lodging, vision, dental, even prescription drugs. So join today. Let's send AARP a strong message that they don't represent conservative seniors. Join AMAC today at amac.us slash unashamed. That's amac.us forward slash unashamed. Uh, I, you know, what I thought about just this scene. You remember in the movie in Jesus Revolution? I don't know if y'all saw it, but in the movie, it's, it's set in the late sixties, early seventies. So the hippie movement is in full force. Dad, you remember it well. You lived in it, and you know you're out in California. And of course, I, I'm assuming that's where the hippie movement started. I don't. You know, most things do start out there. So they wind up coming into this traditional church. And it starts with this, uh, the actor that plays Jesus on The Chosen, he's playing this lead character, he's a hippie. And so the the pastor's daughter meets the guy, gives him a ride, and then brings him to meet her dad to go to, to meet with him at their church. Well, his church is super traditional, you know, typical 60s and 70s, but it didn't be the same today. And so, but all these hippies start coming into this church setting and they're sitting on one side where they look different, they smell different, they act different. But they're all excited to be there. So this pastor's kind of hung because he's up in front of the people on this left half of the people in his congregation. They're all looking across the way at the other people, just like with a scowl. Like, who are these people? Why are they here? Why, why did we let them in here? And they start like giving him grief. They're like, look, they're not, but we're okay. You know, this ain't what we're all about here. These hippies. And yet these other people seem to want to know what he's talking about, Jesus. And so the pivotal scene there in the early part of the film is some people say, well, if they stay here, we're not staying. And this one old man gets up and the pastor thinks he's leaving. Well, he goes over and he sits in with the hippies and puts his arms around him. He's like, I'm with these fellas. And then the other people leave. But I thought it really painted a modern picture for that era of exactly what this text is talking about is when people look different than you, they sound different, they smell different, but they're seeking Jesus we should be in a mode for like, come on in, you know, which of course was the basis of this whole Jesus revolution that came out of that era. So I thought it was really interesting because it really did paint a, a more modern picture of exactly what was happening in this setting. At least in my mind, it did, you know, it made it, made it very realistic. 
<laughs> Here's wow. what was that doing when it, on that great point of it. <laughs> Why did you think I was going to say well, something? Well, you just had a look like you were going to respond. <laughs> I, I brought up a movie. You're a movie mogul. I've never seen that movie. I guess I never well, I figured y'all didn't. That's why I was saying if you had Zach saw it, because I saw I, it. With I'm it. always I I, I, It always scares me when I see a movie that has something Jesus in the title from Hollywood, because I'm like, oh, boy. Yeah. You know. But it was really, really good. And in fact, in, there, in that movie, um, Greg Lowry, who's a great evangelist out in California, who helped start a lot of stuff out there, in his baptism scene, it was powerful like it was on Dad's baptism scene in the blind, because like I cried. I mean, I was like when he renewed his life because he had a rough background, had a rough upbringing, and that all that he saw in all this setting with what I'm talking about with the hippies and the accepting people and loving people that aren't like you really is what shaped that guy. And dad, you and I have done a couple of things with him before and he's tremendous, you know, so the movie's great. Yeah. I'm, I'm well, I think most people that come and, and you're sharing Jesus with them and we've all had those moments. I mean, I, I remember having a study, you know, with a guy, he was a, he was a male prostitute and basically his argument was, which I mean, he came to my house and sat down and was willing to listen it's like, well, there's no way I can be in on this. Yeah. I was like, what do you mean? This whole, everything Jesus did was welcoming people just like you right. to his banquet. Right. He's like, what? Because <laughs> he expected, because people have an aura about religious people, which is where they get this, is because the Pharisees are muttering. Why is he associating with people like this? I mean, which, granted, Jesus has not, died yet and but that proved beyond a shadow of a doubt god's love for all human people that he died yeah. for the sin of everybody i think there's just a disconnect with us so when he tells the first story about suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them does he not leave the 99 in the open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it i mean before we even get to what he's saying we as humans gravitate towards being the 99 we're never the one we're like oh well yeah that yeah. poor sheep you know but it's not me it's not gonna happen to me i mean this kind of goes back to luke 13 when you have this tragedy come up and they're accusing jesus of why do bad things you know happen to good people because you know, Pilate had sacrificed, you know, worshipers in a in a horrific way. And Jesus, he doesn't even answer the question. He brings up another random tragedy. He's like, well, what about the 18 people that got killed when the tower fell on them? And so he's like, well, what was his point? His point was very radical. He said, you need to repent <laughs> before something bad happens life, to you. Life is fragile. That's what that means. He he did the same thing earlier, you know, speaking of cost of following Jesus. Remember when he said the guy on one of the excuses on why he wasn't going to follow Jesus, he's like, well, I got to go. My dad just died and I got to go to the funeral. And Jesus says something very uncomfortable. He's like, go let the dead bury their own dead, but you go proclaim the will of God. It just seems like he's not compassionate in that moment, but what he's doing is he's telling you the truth. Right. The truth is, just because you're a pretty good person doesn't mean something tragic is not going to happen to you. If you believe that, that's just a lie. Yep. The truth is, we're all the one. We're all the one. And I, the last time I preached this somewhere, you know, I, I came up with an illustration that the people who are registered to vote who who didn't vote if those people would have voted for you or me we would be the president of the united states and my point was you forget the power of each individual cuz there's so many people around right i mean just think about it. everybody gripes about who's president and, and whatever if all the people who didn't vote, who were registered, would have voted to any voted for any one of us, we would be yeah. the president. That's it just shows the... you you don't think your vote matters. You don't think you matter. You don't think you're the one. You don't think it's going to happen to you. And somewhere, the power in in the no, story I think of what I Jesus... think you've tapped into it. Let's take our last break.
I think you tapped into it, Jace. The major theme of all three of these parables is the value that God, the creator, it puts on an individual, any individual. That's why the, I mean, the, that's, the that really door is, is the narrow. Yeah. It's because it's the, the door is actually a person named Jesus, and we come to him one at a time. And I think that's the big excuse the world gives against religion. There's like, you know, and I've heard it a million times. They're like, oh, so God created all this universe and all these planets. And we can't even see it in a telescope. And you think that big of God is worried about little old me, uh, uh, the equivalent of a grain of sand on the seashore? But that's what they're thinking. That That's what we have to have the conversation with, with people who don't have a relationship with God, because that is their argument. They're like, no way. They they dismiss it. He If he's that big, he can't be worried about me. Yeah. And you're like, well... How about Luke 15? Because here, that's basically what Jesus is indirectly destroying in that argument. That's why I'm sitting at this table. Right. That's exactly right. And and the value that he puts there. Let's read the rest of that uh, context. Because it does not leave the 99 in the open uh, to go after the lost sheep until he finds it. And he's saying that as a, 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 uh, you know, the rhetorical question, right? The answer would be, of course he would. And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders. So here's the concept of joy. That's going to be throughout these stories as well. Oh, it's easily missed. Yeah, exactly. Look, it is a major pillar. It could just think about it. Going back to my illustration about someone knocking on the door and saying, what would bring you joy? And most of us go with something earthly. That's our first response. Well, you know, I just got a bill for whatever. It'd be nice if somebody knocked on the door and said, look, I'm going to pay that big. You know, I'm going to get you out of debt. Or I'm, that's where we think real joy lies because it shows by our daily life. That's what we're getting upset about. That's what we're having arguments with our wife about. Or, I mean, what are the number one arguments in marriage? Usually something to do with money or the lack thereof. And he's talking about joy, and it's going to happen over and over. Rejoice, joy, rejoice. Not only on earth. But in heaven, there's right. joy in heaven. Oh man, that's when something is lost that is found. And you, when you start, when you you go back to the original statement, there's joy in heaven over a sinner that repents. Yep. I mean, just think about how moving that is. I, I just imagine, you know, every time, based on what I've read here, every time someone comes to the Lord and we're clapping and we sing and there's tears, all these things, the people that know them. But thinking about heaven celebrating in those moments, one after another, I mean, it's very inspiring. So we had a we had a service recently, an assembly where, uh, and I think y'all were both there. Uh, where it was a men's retreat, and this was their first Sunday at the end of the retreat. And a lot of people had made a lot of life commitment change. And I remember I walked over to one of our buddies, Gary Glenn, who was on our podcast uh, a while back when we were studying Romans. And I said, "Well, what do you think about this, Gigi?" And he said. I'm addicted to change lives. <laughs> and I thought, what a great line. Because we were both joyful about the morning. You remember they had the bell up front, and a lot of times the guys would ring the bell signifying that they had made a commitment to Christ. And so everybody would clap and cheer every time that bell went off. And it was just a symbol, but it was a really powerful one because it does show you that if there's rejoicing here, what do you think is happening in heaven, according to Jesus in this context? So, Well, let's read it. Is yeah, that a verse it. 7? Yeah, and, and when he finds it, he joyfully puts the lamb, the sheep, on his shoulder, and he goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me. There it is again, Jay. I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents? Now, this is a quite a statement at the end of this. Then over ninety nine righteous persons who do not need to repent, and which is interesting that you know Jesus makes that statement because mm-hmm. we know. I mean, he's saying, "Wait a minute is, is he saying there's righteous people apart from him?" And which is a big theological question that comes out of this context. Exactly, and there's a lot of ways to read this. Right. So you know, some people think. He's being sarcastic at the Pharisees 
yep. you know, who thinking they don't need to right. repent. Yes. But at some point, we know if you read the rest of the Bible, and you got to remember, this is a parable on why he's eating with tax collectors and sinners because he's after each individual. But at some point, we all, as adults, have to repent. Yep. So, and there's now, plenty of other passages in the Bible that let us know there's no one righteous, not even one, right? Romans yeah. 3 and a lot of other passages. So, so he's definitely not making a theological statement here. So whatever right. he was doing to illustrate his point, I think to Jason's point earlier, the overarching thought is he's talking about the one versus the collective. Because the Pharisees were more con- more concerned about the collective. What are people thinking? How are people viewing this oh, situation? Exactly. Or that? It's always is, about the collective instead of the one. This is the greatest news on earth. I mean, this is something you could stand up and preach on. No matter what you've done, where you're from, he loves you. He's after you, not not your buddy next to you. And because we always do that, he's like, if you're in, if you're in a church service and you're hearing a great sermon and you're thinking of all the people that you're glad that's in the audience that this message is going to, I would, I would. I would take a moment and pause and say, well, what about you? That's right. Because that's what we tend to do as human beings because we're depending on our self-righteous. But the good news, that is great news. It's inspiring. The bad news is he tells a story that relates us to sheep, which I will present is the one of the top 10 dumbest animals <laughs> on the planet. That's right. <laughs> And help- they're so dumb and helpless. They have to have a shepherd. So I, I mean, I think we need to talk about that because <laughs> there, there, there's a truth in there somewhere. You know why he picked the sheep uh, up and put it on his shoulder? Do you know why? Probably so it wouldn't run off. Again. <laughs> it's so dumb that it's not like a dog. It won't follow you back home. It doesn't say, oh, great, I've been worried I'm about finally it. finally back where I'll get food. No, it'll run off even at, you literally have to pick him up. And I've done so many research, done so much research on, on sheep. I mean, because you know what the one of the most common deaths of sheep are? Or is, I forget how I said that, uh, is... They will, they're just, because they're they're constantly just following their appetite, right. which I think there's message in there somewhere. And they'll get up on the side of a mountain that's not safe in, in, the, in the quest for grass, and they'll get out there, and they're not aware of their surroundings, and just fall off the mountain and die. <laughs> <laughs> Over what? Some grass. The next you, bite. You realize how much grass there is on the earth, That's and you have to go. I mean, and when you get in the different kinds of sheep, even when I was in Colorado, I mean, we almost had a car wreck because people were looking at these whatever they call them, rock yeah. horn, yeah, sheep the, or whatever, the, the ones with the horns on them. Yeah, yeah, they're up on the. Just you're looking. You're like, how f- physics wise. Did they get up to the top of this mountain right. and are just barely hanging on? And I said, that just proves one thing. Sheep are dumb. We need a shepherd. Because <laughs> there's way more grass down the flatland than up in the mountain. All right, we're out of time, but uh, we're just getting cranked up onto a great uh, chapter, Luke 15. So read ahead, do a little study, and be ready for us. We'll talk about some more in overtime. Uh, BlazeTV.com slash unashamed is where we'll do that. So we'll see you there. Thanks for listening to the Unashamed Podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes. And don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube and be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.